Welcome everyone. We can start the meeting with the Pledge of the Flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of the June 10th, 2013 regular town board meeting. We have a motion to accept the minutes. Motion. A second. Second. Scott, all in favor? Aye. 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 Supervisor's report for the month of June 2013. General A fund beginning balance was $314,257.07. Total received was $76,044.60. Total dispersed $359,326.53. Leaving ending balance $30,975.14. Savings for the general aid presently at $464,497.38. General B fund at beginning balance $38,623.67. Total received was $1,785.11. Total dispersed $33,307.42. And ending balance of seven thousand one hundred and one dollars thirty six cents. Savings for the general B is at sixty nine thousand one hundred ninety eight dollars and ninety two cents. Highway DB at the beginning balance of two hundred thirty thousand seven hundred fifty three dollars and forty four cents. Total received was twenty dollars and sixty nine cents. Total dispersed one hundred ninety one thousand three hundred dollars seventy eight cents. And ending balance of thirty nine thousand four hundred seventy three dollars and thirty five cents. <coughs> Savings for the Highway DB is at $320,323.39. The Highway DA, beginning balance $351,432.14. Total received $13.80. Total dispersed $327,829.94. And ending balance $23,616 even. Savings for the Highway DA is at $652,905.61. The Young's Water District had a beginning balance of $5,184.18. Total received was $4,264.41. Total dispersed $8,612.60, leaving ending balance of $835.99. Savings for the Young's Water District is at $26,000. $396.75. Motion to accept supervisor's report. Make that motion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Janet, town clerk and code enforcement officer's report, please. I paid $1,068.25 to the supervisor. I paid $355.25 to the DEC. $14 to the New York State Animal Population Control. $22.50 to the State Health Department. And I received $800 even from the Code Enforcement Officer. Motion to accept Town Clerk, Code Enforcement Officer's report. Motion. Dave, second. Second. Right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Janet, if you would audit the bill, please. A general A fund, batches number 189 to 210, $4,118.05. Also received the bill from Dowser for $96.75, New York State Electric and Gas, all accounts $853.65. General B fund vouchers number 24 to 26, $766 even. Highway DA fund vouchers number 77 to 81, $29,472.99. Highway DB fund vouchers number 12 to 18, $125,166.49. Water District vouchers number 23 to 24, $344.29. And the youth program vouchers number 2 and 3, $542.54. Motion to pay bills. Motion. Howard, second. Second. Are they all in favor? Aye. 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 Warrants. June payroll checks number 21275 to number 21292 and the direct deposits in the amount of $40,721.32. All motion? Motion. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
June Trust and Agency checks number 4904 to number 4911 and the electronic tra transfers in the amount of $86,052.85. I need a motion. Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Chris, Highway Superintendent Report, please. Uh, things are going pretty well. We've been lucky so far with the rain and stuff, so um, uh, we're getting a lot of stuff done. Um, we got eight tenths of a mile paved on Spielman Road all the way to the Town of Liberty Line for Route 52, and um, with hot mix asphalt. And we sealed almost four miles last Friday um, up Hester Lair on across all of Old Dancer, and then the uh, 1.8 miles that we paved on Stump Pond earlier in the year, so we, that, was that we did it to work warm mix asphalt so we sealed that and we've got uh, the 1.1 miles of Cuba Road scheduled for the week of the 22nd if the weather cooperates and uh, so we're going moving right along and other than that we're still changing pipes and, and trying to mow the grass and everything else uh, but it's going pretty well we've been lucky so far absolutely yeah. anybody anything for the highway good Thanks, Chris. Code enforcement, Kevin. Uh, things are going pretty good. You know, the permits are busy. I got I don't know, probably three or four people coming in talking about putting up new houses. Should be picking up a little. Um, we have something later on the agenda. I'll just have to speak for a little bit with that. Please. Okay, this time we'll open the floor up for any um, other comment on the agenda items only. Any questions or comments? If not, we'll move right into them. It's really simple. Okay. First on our list is our town park. <coughs> um, we've been researching and trying to find some prices on equipment to finish our kitchen area at the pavilion so that it would be uh, usable for more occasions. And Charlie, I'll let you just speak to that a little bit. Charlie's been doing a lot of legwork on, <coughs> on that. So. I've been up to Kaiser's and uh, we looked at the stuff we need for the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to go back up tomorrow, make sure that uh, they have everything we need, and we're going to try to move forward on it. Uh, we're going to look at a stove, um, three base sink, uh, two door cooler, uh, a hood for the uh, stove, and um, a table for the center, just like a serving table for the dishes on and stuff like that. So, we'll like find out more tomorrow. Okay, you, uh, because this is used equipment, we've also had several other, I tried contacting Green Demolitions, another company, and now they've moved out of the area and they actually contacted them in New Jersey. So they're not local anymore. Um, they've had a contact um, that also is gonna use restaurant equipment business and had nothing, at least nothing what we were looking for. Right. So we've tried at least three different vendors and Kaiser's right here, I know with our experience with them, with the fire department, they've, they've been, um, very good for Youngsville with equipment that we've needed and service and so forth. Uh, and I know you had a ballpark figure for this equipment before and they didn't give you a definite, but it was somewhere around $4,000, I think. Yeah, uh, <coughs> and the, the sink is new, uh, the cooler and the, uh, the stove is refurbished. Uh, the hood's gonna be new and the, the table's new. For the price of them, they said you might as well go new, there's not much difference. And uh, he also offered to give us a break because he knows it's going to, the kids are going to be using it. So I thought that was nice of him also. He knocked a couple hundred dollars off of everything be, because it involved the kids. So you want to entertain a motion maybe to, to uh, put a limit on what we spend and if they still have that equipment? Because obviously it could be sold any day, I guess. Right. Know, and if he's, I know well, we thought it was um, what we needed. The person I talked to today, the person I've been dealing with wasn't there, um, but another person I talked to said that if if they don't have it, they'll get it. So they move a lot of stuff in and out. So, um, so if, if we make a motion to spend up to four thousand dollars, any thoughts on that? 
Yeah. Up you might to, want to make it just a little bit. Yeah, I, I think we should. Well, that way they couldn't charge us anymore. We're telling them. Well, you, um, okay, so the suggestion is for uh, not to exceed 4,500 hours. And then hopefully it'll be <coughs> that. Everybody okay with that? I'll make it all Get the leave. equipment that Charlie yeah. talked about. That way, if um, they have it and they can arrange delivery of it, we can move on it. Yeah. Right. The only thing we'll have to do with that is it's a gas stove oven that uh, you know have to have a hook up there. <coughs> so um, okay, so somebody with a motion. Dave, Dave already did. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Howard I second. second it. Way ahead of me. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 <laughs> Charlie, make sure you tell um, me we only have so, 15. <laughs> well, uh, as long as we're on that, uh, we've been kicking around some ideas, use of the park. I know ASO Soccer uses it, and it's great to see the kids there. You know, we've put it out there. That it's, it's for use for um, town residents at no charge, and, and maybe having the equipment available in there will, will help with that, and, and we'll, of course, rent it out um, for non-residents. But um, we thought about trying to hold an event there and a few of the board members and myself were talking about a possibility of, a, of an auto show, car show, antique. It doesn't have to be car, but, you know, could be uh, motor vehicles. And uh, in talking about this several times, Joanne gave us an idea of trying to hold that in conjunction with Calhoun Center Fire Department's Pancake Breakfast. Um, we talked to, actually, the president. I talked to Peter a little bit about this. And uh, their breakfast is coming up the 8th of August. So I, I think it was pretty much at your meeting, everybody was in favor of that. I think it would only enhance, you know, probably your, your, your breakfast, which is very good anyway. So we just thought it was too soon to try and get this off the ground, plus they found out there was another car show for that same date. Uh, I'm not sure where, but locally somewhere. So we're going to try and shoot for it next year. Um, so if anybody has some ideas on that, but I think it's something that a lot of people would enjoy. You can bring the family out and go to breakfast and enjoy it nice uh, time in our park so that's just one of the things but we're always open for ideas so but we'll try and shoot for that breakfast date for next week yeah. um, okay anybody else on the town park anything we're good no. all right number two addition to our May minutes uh, at the May meeting as any of you that were here were aware was the, the night that uh, I spoke I had some comments regarding the uh, process of the updating of the comprehensive plan. <coughs> um, it was not prepared, it was not rehearsed, and I just spoke from, from my heart, from my gut. I had a number of people after the meeting that said to me that they thought it was uh, very well done and were surprised that I didn't have anything prepared. But a couple of people had suggested that we make that a part of the uh, minutes for that meeting. And had somebody had actually volunteered to transcribe it from the uh, audio tape. That was done. We have a copy of that if anybody would care to see it. But I would like to ask for a motion to add that to the, uh, make it part of the minutes for the May 13th meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Third, we have a suggestion for a revised, revised fee schedule. Um, and I'm struck Fred Freeze would be here. He's not. Fred is the chairman of our planning board, long time, and um, these, what they are, is trying to bring us a little bit more um, with in line with what other towns charge and still be reasonably and, and user friendly. We think that is. So we, we do have a list of that to compare with the old one. I've asked all the board members to look it over. They've had that chance. Um, we're fortunate we have several other code enforcement officers on the board that work for other towns and they've been able to do some comparisons. So we've got this revised fee schedule. There's minor increases in fees for almost everything from minor subdivisions to um, lot improvements. And one thing that we never had, we never charged a fee for zoning board of appeals. They don't meet a lot, but we never, you know, we have to advertise for that and there's costs associated with it. So other towns have charged for that, and it's basically just to recoup our expenses mm -hmm. that are um, withholding a public meeting. 
So I've looked at it, the board has looked at it. Um, Kevin or Greg, if you want to speak to this a little bit, anything, I mean, I'm fine with it. Um, again, speaking with the, with both uh, Dave and Howard, both code enforcement and other towns, I think they're in line and probably mm -hmm. still a little bit less than other towns show up. The big issue was that the fee schedule that we had was not consistent. It was all over the board, different prices for different things. So basically we went through it and rounded things up to come in line, mid, mid, mid line of what the other towns are getting. We're not high, we're not low, we're, we're in the middle. And just, just to round things off so that it was simpler to keep track of what the fees were. You could, you could figure it without having a calculator. That's all, just to make it easier and catch up with the times. Greg, do you have any thoughts with that little projection? Anything that were, did you see that stuck out? No, they, they're, they're worth, I, I agree with Kevin. I mean, we just need to simplify more consistency in there so, so the fees were somewhat went in line. But the, the Bethel numbers are higher and the Kashekta number is a little lower, so we're, we're, we're right in the middle of all of them. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we have to do this by resolution model if we change these fees. Yeah, you have in your enabling legislation that fees can be changed by resolution from time to time. So you could just make a resolution to adopt these, these fees as per the schedule, and you'll make the schedule part of the resolution and go from there. That's all you have to do. Okay. So, if anybody has questions on it, if not, I'll entertain the motion to. Um, uh, I'll make that motion that we uh, go with the new fee schedule as recommended by <coughs> the planning board. Okay. So could you write that up, or could we just simply write that? I think you pass the resolution and uh, ju and just adop adopting this fee schedule. Okay. I okay. And Simple enough. I'll second it. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the floor to adopt the revised fees as given to us. Um, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, number four on our list are grant letters of intent um, applications. We. Uh, FEMA actually has opened up a grant application for mitigation efforts, flooding, um, for any statewide actually, um, for any basically counties that were affected or declared after Irene and, and Lee and, and uh, now Sandy. Um, so we certainly um, fall within that. There's like 500 million, I think, that it's going to be available. Um, there's a list of different types of projects that are, are uh, eligible. But you first you have to send letters of intent, and after they receive letters of intent, then you'll get the actual application. So we have decided we have three different projects that we would like to send letter of intent. So we've been working on them. I know one we've submitted already. Uh, they just extended the deadline from the 5th of July till August 1st, and I think that was due to the flooding in the Mohawk Valley just recently. These are FEMA grants, but actually the applicant is the state of New York through the State Emergency Management Office. And we, the town, would be actually a sub-applicant, if I understand that correctly. There are 75% reimbursable grants, 25% matching. Um, we're hoping, and I've been in touch with uh, Aileen Gunther's office, that uh, if we're so lucky to receive any of this funding for some of these projects, that maybe our state would be the uh, help us with the 25% match. So there's three things that we have been working on. And number one, uh, you're all aware, and, and we've talked about many times, is the flooding issues that we've had. And it isn't just in Young's Law. I want to point that out. We, we have other areas of our town that have sustained flooding, but it seems the Panther Rock in Youngsville has been the most often and affected the most people. Um, in 2010, a study was completed by Army Corps of Engineers that did a Calicoon Creek watershed, and it really ended at the hamlet of Calicoon where it meets the Delaware. So at that time when that study was completed after several years and probably excess of $100,000 cost the Army Corps to do that study, we thought, well, another study was done and nothing's going to happen, but I really thought that now that this is completed, it will be another stepping stone towards 
work that could be done. One of the projects that we've talked about, and this board has been adamant that we're going to try and do something to decrease the velocity of the flow that causes so much of the problem. Our DOT has been great. They're, they're actually proposing some ideas, uh, State Department of Transportation, and, and you were going to ask why Department of Transportation is because it's their bridge that has been a problem in Youngsville that has caused a lot of the flooding. So they're not going to replace the bridge. We know that. It's um, not worthy of, of a replacement, it's in good shape, and it would cost approximately $3 million to replace that bridge, we were told, by Jack Williams. But what they did is pledge to us that instead of trying to replace a bridge that was structurally sound, that they would work with us, the town, Soil and Water, DEC, of doing some project upstream in the Panther Rock Brook, which is the, the biggest culprit. So at first we talked about doing debris racks, and that would be a structure placed upstream in a bridge that would divert the large woody debris. Um, that really now uh, they're not looking towards that because they're worried of creating more problems just in a different area. So what we're working on now with them is, is um, stream stabilization. A lot of you have seen the work that was done in Youngsville behind mowers and more, that's steel sheeting. This is more of a containment with pilings driven into the stream bank, but maybe with some heavier material such as a guardrail that you see alongside the state highways on the bottom, but then with a heavy woven wire fence towards the top, something in these most vulnerable areas to allow the banks to reestablish themselves on their own, which they're not getting time to do between storms. So I know I'm worried about this and I'm trying to just describe it as best I can, but our DOT is, is basically pledged to us that they would give us support. They're actually working on some design right now. Uh, we're going to work, I spoke with Soil and Water today, Brian Bruskin, of, of finding a couple of the sites that are most vulnerable, approaching some of the landowners there to see, you know, if their cooperation that we would need for easements or whatever it would be. So getting back to this grant application, we thought one of our areas we would like to apply for is from funding that um, we know there's other areas of town, other than Youngsville, that could use the same type of mitigation efforts. So if we were successful in the grant application um, for that particular project, we could use that at other areas. So that's one. Um, and I'll just, of course, keep you informed as this goes along. Nothing is fast, believe me, but uh, we'll take it one step at a time. So that's number one project. Uh, the number <coughs> two, uh, has been a, a large project that's been proposed. We've talked about it for years, and that's the construction of a dry dam at a site north of Youngsville on the Panther Rock, which uh, people that have been here for a while know what the old Camp Chickalack was. There was a dam there. There was a small lake um, that washed out well, was quite a few years ago now. So Army Corps has looked at the site. We've looked at the site. We have a willing landowner to uh, assist us. What we don't have is enough study done. I know you're all going to be happy to hear this, but even meeting with the Army Corps, Dave and I have several times over the last month or two, and even though the Army Corps study was completed in 2010, yes, it's one small stepping stone, but additional study analysis would need to be done of this area before at least any federal help would come towards a construction of a dry dam. So since we don't know if a dry dam is even possible, we have no idea what it may cost. Um, there's no sense us applying for that at this point, but we thought it would make more sense to maybe apply for the fees that would, the cost for this additional study. Um, an engineering firm that's done work in the town of Rockland and was highly recommended to us, looked at the site, met with soil and water, and they gave us a proposal of $21,000 ballpark figure for this study. So we thought, if that's what needs to be done, then why don't we try to apply for the funding for that particular study? Um, the Army Corps representative that toured the area with us told us if they did it, it probably would cost more than that and take longer. So that's number two. Number three is um, a separate letter of intent for another one. We feel this has very good chance, keep our fingers crossed, is a larger backup generator at our town barn. Uh, I think in 2009 we installed that one, um, had, it propo had proposals out, several different contractors gave us proposals. 
And what we found out is it never worked right since we installed it. And it's basically undersized. So we've had people look at that. We need a larger one. And um, it is an evacuation site for our town residents in the event of any natural disaster. And we need to have backup power there if we need to house any men or people there. When the Sandy occurred, we were out, what, nine days, 12 days, something like that? Monday to Saturday. So our men couldn't really work in the barn, couldn't get the door away, couldn't open the But anyway, we need a larger generator. So we have an approximate cost of around $30,000. That's approximate. But what we thought was the generator that's there is only a few years old, and if the only problem with it, and believe me, we've had people look at it, that if we were to be successful in the grant application for a bigger one there, that we would move the smaller 22 kW generator down to this facility for backup power here. So that's our thoughts. That's our three different areas of um, projects that we're right at this point, and we will be submitting all those applications. Um, there may be other projects we may think of and um, also apply or submit a letter of intent. But for right now, that's what we're intending on doing. Um, I just, do you have any update on numbers of some of you? <coughs> okay, Scott's going to brief us on an update for the, the uh, summer rec program for the summer basketball camp. The, uh, the summer basketball camp started today, uh, it runs the next two weeks, and we have uh, 31 kids signed. It seems like every year there's a few more that come in, the, in that first week or so. So, 31 is the number as of right now. And uh, everything went smoothly today and got off to a good start. And by next month's meeting, I can tell you how it went. <laughs> so, seems well received every year and uh, is a nice program for the kids for a couple months. So, good. Thanks, Scott. Okay, for public comment, any other board members have anything they'd like to? Yes, good. Huh? So, I mean, these, I think, you know, this, the three projects are really important that we pursue that. Yeah. Okay. You guys good? We're good. Okay. All right. This time we'll open up for public comment. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, Joe Wainer, Calton Center. Uh, I just, what's the engineering firm that you're going to? that you're proposing to use in letter intent number two? The only one that we've gotten a proposal from, we haven't even done a request for proposal, was Woit, W-O-I-D-T, and they're out of Binghamton. And I thought you said, um, I'm sorry, I thought you said from Town of Rockland. They did work in the Town of Rockland. I see. And that's how Soil and Water recommended them to us, and they actually came down, they didn't charge us just to look at the site, mm -hmm. and we have a little bit of a pamphlet that they prepared with their findings, initial findings. So, but, uh, you know, we would have to go for a request for proposals. Uh, right. But they're just the one that gave us a ballpark figure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to continue a little bit um, on the topic of methane in drinking water that I started at the June 10th meeting. And I want to present some peer-reviewed published science about the incidence of methane in drinking water. But first, I have to just go back for a couple of points about the letters from the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection that I gave to Mr. Bose and the town of Calicoon on June 10th. Um, those letters had three important points in every letter. Every letter, um, the DEP um, said that the, they had determined that the Pennsylvania homeowner, home, homeowner had methane in their drinking water as a result of gas drilling activities. The second point was that um, that posed the danger of explosion or fire or even asphyxiation to the people that lived in that home. And the third point was that the hazards of methane in drinking water cannot be eliminated simply by putting a vent on their um, well. So those are important points, but mostly it is that that was not on the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection website. Um, they were not forthcoming with that information, and that collection of letters 
is covers the period 2008 to 2012. Those letters were on Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection letterhead, the letters that are now submitted to the town of Calhoun. And um, they were obtained by right to know uh, information. And similarly, this map was obtained by right to know information. This is a map of the, those kinds of letters that the DEP has issued that tell the homeowner their well was affected by gas drilling. The orange dots show the letters that are similar to the ones I submitted last um, month. The orange dots are those kinds of letters. And from the shape of Pennsylvania State on this map, this is Scranton right here. You can see that there's a cluster of orange dots just to the, around Scranton and north of Scranton. And I just want to say that um, Scranton is pretty close to here, and our geology may be very similar to theirs. And certainly, our geology in Scranton is distinct <coughs> from the western part of Pennsylvania, where the orange dots are more diffuse. So um, to continue, I have um, these uh, further comments. The possibility of methane getting into drinking water is often dismissed by um, people because there's a large distance between the surface groundwater and the fracking operation. The science I'm presenting tonight um, uses chemical methods called fingerprinting. And the term fingerprinting is used much in the same way as you use it to identify an individual person. <coughs> and it's very specific, it's a very standard method and it shows that methane, ethane, and propane in drinking water wells located within 0.6 miles of a gas well have 17 times higher chance of having a significantly elevated methane level than gas wells that are farther away. Um, and it, this is distinctive because to know that the gas that's in your water is coming from the deep down Marcellus Shale is important because the Marcellus Shale formation started as an area of seawater, and the mountains crumbled, and there was a very high temperature and high pressure process that formed the shale. And the methane that's in there is in microscopic bubbles. This is not like conventional vertical gas drilling, where a vertical well is drilled and there's a pocket of methane down there sucked out. This horizontal hydraulic fracturing method is an explosion, basically an uncontrolled <coughs> explosion at very high pressure, to release those microscopic bubbles. So um, what, they, what this first paper shows, and I'll tell about this in a minute, is that the methane that's in the drinking waters in the houses that are close to gas wells is mostly the thermogenic methane, the deep methane. It's fingerprinted as that. It's determined, it's absolute fact. It, there's also a combination of biological degradation methane in those wells. At the surface, you'll have some of both. But when you get a large proportion of the thermogenic methane there, it's telling you that that's coming up from deep in the earth. Now, the two articles that I've given Mr. Bowes, and I'm asking that they be put in the collection of science that the town of Calhoun is accumulating from my submissions, <coughs> are um, methane contamination of drinking water accompanying gas well drilling and hydraulic fracturing, and <coughs> geochemical evidence for possible natural migration of Marcellus Formation brine to shallow aquifers in Pennsylvania. The first authors are author, Osborne and Warner. The journal is PNAS in both cases. I just want to review for you what PNAS is. is. It's the uh, monthly journal of the proceedings of the National Academy <coughs> of Sciences. The first paper is from 2011. The second paper is from 2012. PNAS is United States Government Corporation. Anyone can go online and type in PNAS and get these papers. It's, it's free to all. The National Academy of Sciences was started by Abraham Lincoln. It's an organization of the most preeminent scientists in the nation. They are voted in by their peers. Um, they have to prove that they have distinguished uh, research credentials and they're ongoing doing original research. 10% of them have won a Nobel Prize and they do advise the government uh, on a no charge basis. So it's important to know that the PNAS publications are world-renowned and nation-renowned, and it's a very high-caliber journal. These articles are not um, paid advertisements, and they're not coming out of trade journals. These are original science research studies. So to summarize the first article, 
by Osborne, there were 68 wells in, Pen in northeast Pennsylvania um, that were checked for what was in what was in the drinking water, and the methane level was uh, 17 up to 17 times higher if the well was in within 0.6 miles of a gas uh, drilling operation. And like I said, it was fingerprinted to know and known to contain a high amount of thermogenic gas. That's the gas that's fingerprinted and known to be occurring from Marcellus Vale shale formation deep down. The second paper is also from Northeast Pennsylvania water wells, and they examined the possibility of fluid migration between the Marcellus formation and the more shallow groundwater. And they use, again, fingerprinting methods, among other chemical methods, to identify where the salts are going and where the substances are going. And they showed that there are common um, connected pathways between the shale formation and the surface that have been there even before gas drilling started. The bedrock has something called brine. So when you see or hear brine used in, in relation to gas fracking, you have to remember that it could be one of have any couple any one of a couple of meanings. Mm -hmm. But um, there is there is connections, there co there's conductive there's connectivity and there's hydrodynamic pressure differences that could cause um, meth uh, methane to come up from below so, through natural. Me, that's right. I, I just I appreciate all of your information, and I'm sure most people are are uh, you know interested in that. And we have received that, and we will add the information you have. I just I gave you a lot of latitude here as far as time, and I just out of respect okay. for others. One sentence to summarize. One sentence. Um, I would just like to <coughs> say that I believe there is a very true and a very real risk of <coughs> methane contamination coming into town of Calicoon. Principal aquifers, if horizontal hydraulic fracking was uh, occurred here. And those principal aquifers are what supplies all of us with our drinking water and our water for agricultural production. Thank you. Thank you. Whew, we're all over the place now. I gotta go back here. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a comment. Um, Sullivan County will never have to worry about fracking because Governor Cuomo is such a wuss that he will never approve it. So don't worry, it ain't gonna happen. New York never fails to miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. I, it, it, it wouldn't be a complete evening if I didn't share what it feels like every time I come here. Um, I'm sorry that I wasn't here for the passage of the comp plan in spite of the multitude of surveys that were done showing that the majority of the people that live in this town did not want industrialization or the possibility of fracking coming to this town in our comp plan, but it got passed anyway. Um, but it, 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 and I want to thank you for 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 bringing us more information. Just do this everybody I'm going to do it real please, quick. Please so here's the no, no, because some people don't know who you are. You oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, stand, oh, Victoria please, Lesser. Stand, please, Victoria, oh, sure. And, and tell Thank who you are. See how tall I am. <laughs> Victoria <laughs> Lesser. Victoria <laughs> Lesser, North Branch. Thank you. Yes. So, so one of the things you know. Because each time I, I share, I always attempt to bring something else to the mix, even though it's always about the same topic. Um, the gas industry has the most amazing PR firm ever. In fact, they've got a great new advertisement they're doing now. They show a farmer and his tractor and his family and, and how well they did and the wells in the background. And then they say, think about it. You know, he made the choice, what was best for him, and how many people are surviving because of that. But think about it. And one of the things that I guess is, is the most disheartening is when you see these commercials or when you hear these other stories, we don't know any of those people. We don't live there. And of course, it's a commercial, and I'm sure it's a paid actor. You know, they, it's, they, they don't even put a thing underneath it that says it's a, a real farmer. But we know each other here. I mean, we're, we're, we're neighbors to each other. I was just talking to a, a, a group of friends, and I was saying, you know, the difference is whenever I hear people talk about the gas drilling. They say, I have a right to, to do what I want with my land. I have a right to make the money. I have a right to do all of those things. And one of the things that I've come to recognize, especially in the realm of recovery, whenever you come to, if you ever experience a 12-step program, every step starts with the word we. We. And it amazes me. And, and all I can, can say is because, because there's, there's Obviously, you have the science. It's been published, it's been shown, and it, an accident can happen. 
It doesn't matter whether it's more times than not. It can happen. And that you would have the willingness to take a risk of, of we, all of the we that, 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 that put you in office. I'll end, it, I'll end what I'm going to say with what I said what I ended with every time I've either gone to Washington or Albany or Trenton or whatever, how do you sleep at night knowing that this is what you, you're doing against the wish of the majority of the people who spoke to you? And that's it. I can't speak to the rest of the board members. I sleep very well. Right. Next, please. Great. Jim Fullerton, Shanley. I think the Constitution of the United States, Article 4, has something about my property, my right to do with it as I please. If I want to drill, I'll drill. You can drill in a lot of places. The governor of Pennsylvania wants to get out of the Delaware River Authority so he can drill there. They have a good time. And you could light faucets on fire in Pennsylvania 50 years, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can see where this is going again. And, 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 uh, we, uh, we've been trying to get to this. Excuse me, I'll get right back with you. Um, I know public comment is just that. It's public comment. We, we can't disallow it. We want, well, we could actually by law. This is a privilege, and, uh, and I think it's a privilege we all should uh, really value. But what we can do, and I know one other township tried it and they were threatened with a lawsuit. They wanted to eliminate the uh, public comments regarding natural gas drilling. <laughs> Can't do that either. But we're gonna limit it to a, a time frame here. Folks, we know this. Um, we know it's controversial. We know it's heartfelt from both sides of this issue. So no matter how you feel about it, but we really have to move ahead and um, Continue the science is great. We appreciate that. Um, you know, and the rest of it is hearsay. The rest of it is how you feel and what's going on in other parts of the country. So, as I've said before, I think you've heard me say it's not happening here yet. We don't know if it ever will. We'll take precautions as it comes. And um, <coughs> I'd just like to, to say that because, I, you know, I, I thought we were starting to uh, have discussion that were much better, um, I, I, I don't know the word I want to say, but I, I don't want to get into the back and forth type of thing again. I know it's public comment and you're entitled, but take it outside. I, I, you know, really, it's just not, and I'm not it's advocating for confrontations. This is the place, I know you're upset. But it was more than public comment. Huh? It was public, public comment surveys. Was. It was public surveys. So that's the that. truth. Right. You don't want to, you want to ignore the truth of what the town okay, wanted, well, then right that's great. Then. Okay, so is there any other public else. comment <coughs> on anything else other than natural gas drilling? Yes, sir. It's a stretch, and I'll be short about it. <laughs> Van Morrow from Chandelier. In my annual oil fill-up at my house uh, that happened about a week ago, um, after everyone will remember how long last winter seemed to be, it was the heating season that never ended. Uh, this year, because I have solar hot water in my house, I used, after a long heating season, I used 200 less gallons um, of oil this year. And just, that, that's most of my point already. And just to say that years ago, we actually paid someone to put it in, so it created some employment and it is making hot water like crazy, and I'm um, using very little fuel now. That's a good story. Thank you for that. End of story. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Nancy Lee, Calhoun Center. Um, this is not about pro or con. I just want to ask the town board if there's any, anything in the works to deal with the zoning and the planning issues for the future of perhaps industrialization. When you say in the works, I, I, yeah, we've spoken to that too because uh, the planning board has been looking at other towns that have drafted some different zoning legislation um, that ha you know, obviously haven't allowed it. Actually, some towns that have banned it and some that haven't banned it, but they're pretty restrictive of industrial natural gas. So to say there's no zoning changes right now that are being proposed, I won't say they can't be in the future. But that I have great faith in this planning board 
uh, that they are looking at it very seriously. And um, so, yes, they are. Good. Anyone else? No, not yeah, yet. Yeah, I, I do have a question. Oh. That's me, Joe Weiner, Calhoun Center. Just before when you were saying that you didn't want to discuss gas drilling anymore, and I'm not discussing gas drilling, but you said that uh, the town board would take precautions. And I, I, if you could just sort of describe some of the precautions that the town board is prepared to take <coughs> to prevent accidents or uh, mishaps that could happen with industrial gas drilling or fracking. Look, I don't think anybody, if an accident is possible with any type of machinery, human error, I don't think the town board can prevent an accident from happening. What I think we've spoken about is just what Ms. Lee has referred to, is if our zoning needs to be strengthened, enhanced, that's the power that we have. That's why we um, actually had advocated for Maurice Hinchy's Frack Act. We also advocated for Senator Bonasek's strengthening the Home Rule Authority, if you remember that. We did, yeah, we did, did. resolutions for both of them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by all the powers that we have vested in us by Home Rule that we will do. And I, I will hold this board to that. Hope that helps your question. Yeah, it doesn't, but thank you okay. very much Thanks for your trying. question. Anybody else? <laughs> Peter. Yeah, Peter Lorenzo, Calicoon Center. You know what kind of, I know this, is, get, this gas drilling was all about the environment. You know, we're all, we all kind of put the environment at risk just by driving. I mean, God forbid uh, a gas tanker flips over on that hill coming down into Calicoon Center. Where's all that gas going? I mean, that's what I'm... We live in danger every day, don't we? Right. It's, it's, a, it's a risk. Tragic accident that happened in uh, just off the border of Maine into Quebec, I believe, mm -hmm. with a train derailment that wasn't even manned. It's an accident. That's what they call them accidents. And yes, we're at risk. When you go outside and get in your car, we're at risk. I mean, we're not telling the guys, we're not but telling Valero, there are Valero not to deliver their gas I, here anymore because I, we have to drive. Simple as I that. I, like you, have been involved in, in protective services for going in my 35th year. We spoke with uh, uh, coordinators in uh, Broome County, I believe, when we went to the seminar. Or the, the, several of the board members went to that. I know code enforcement went. And the, uh, the guy from Broome County has the same job as uh, Dick Martinkovic here. And again, his title, Rick, I'm sorry. Uh, sure public safety. Thank you. He spoke at length about the risks that are involved. Now, this is in Broome County. And if I remember, I can almost tell you verbatim what he said. In his job, which holds, I don't know how many people in Broome County, but the people that traverse through Broome County on a daily basis on rail, on road, says we face greater threats every single day by what passes through our county than all of the wells put together would ever pose. Now this is the Commissioner of Public Safety in Broome County, and I'm just paraphrasing what he said. So we know there's risk with everything we do. Look, if we didn't minimize our risks, we wouldn't be doing our job. So <laughs> last one. Well that statement um, needs clarification because the gas and oil industry are exempt from reporting what they put in the ground and the waste they take out of the ground as toxic. So if we knew what was there, we might have a conversation about that. Well, that's why I said we advocated for Henshaw's bill. Henshaw's bill for the Frock Act, because we do believe they should disclose that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else other than gas drilling, and that's it. <laughs> If not, make a motion. there we go. Thank you, everyone. If you've been worried about the cold weather, I heard it's going to warm up a little next week. <laughs>